So I remember meeting Derek McKee for the first time at MagicCon in 2014 in San Diego, California. And it was right as the very first edition of Cherry Casino Playing Cards had been released to the world. And at the time, I had no idea how big a deal they were going to be. And since then, I have been lucky enough to get my hands on every single iteration of these cards. And in a couple of instances, I've been the guy who got to promote them. And so I watched for the next couple years as Derek took the initial success he had with the first run and used that as a jumping off point to then experiment with every single design variation, colorway, stock, tuck, anything he could think of to try to improve upon the initial variation of Cherry Casinos. And it proved two things. The first thing is that he proved that an independent creator and producer of custom playing cards could make nearly as much of a splash in the magic and card industry world as a very large magic company could, despite the fact that he was largely doing it on his own. But the second thing is that he proved that he had built the Cherry Casino brand into a viable investment, because it was shortly thereafter that he ended up partnering with Murphy's Magic to see how far he could take these bad boys. Now give that same dude the backing, the budget, and the resources of a very large magic company, and the only thing holding him back is his pure imagination. You see what I did there? Which, after all of that, is what brings us to these. Now you, like me, might be asking what gives with all of these various colors, and the answer has more to do with what you cannot do with this deck than what you can. Let's say you, dear viewer, are trying to create a deck of cards from scratch. There are two things that you are trying to perfect and then leave alone, and that is design and stock. Derek had already spent years proving the viability and timelessness of this particular design, which is why it hasn't had to change much over these past few years. But stock is a lot more difficult for an independent creator to experiment with because of access. And that's where Murphy's comes in, which is why these were eventually printed on crushed B stock. B stock is casino stock. It's the same stock that casinos print on, so their cards last game after game, day after day. But that means when they're printed, they're very thick. And when you use them for a while, they get fluffy. But when you crush them, see now, they feel luxurious. So let's assume you, like me, have gotten your grubby little mitts on one of these bad boys. Every single deck comes with a gaff card, a double backer, that you can use right out the box. So let me show you something fun that you could do with it. So the only thing that you care about is keeping this double backer on top of the deck before you begin. And you can do it whilst looking like you're shuffling the cards in a very simple manner. Turn the deck so that the top is face out, and then peel off one card, which is the double backer, and then just shuffle off like normal. And then do it again, except now as you're shuffling, when you get toward the end of the deck, just start peeling the cards one at a time until you run out of cards. And that just brings that double backer back to the top. If you want to get fancy with the spices, you can take the deck and turn it the other way so that the face is pointed out, and as you go to drag off the first packet with your thumb, these fingers grip on to that top card, which is the double backer, and peel it along with that packet, and then you can just shuffle off like normal. And the nice part is, that one actually looks pretty good at speed. Okay, so here we go. You're locked and loaded. You've got that double backer sitting on top of the deck, despite the fact that you have thoroughly shuffled the cards. And now I say, if you ever separate a small amount of cards from the rest of the deck, it can make them very nervous. It makes them want to hide their faces from you. And they are very good at hiding their faces from you. Let me show you what I mean. And then I turn the deck face up, and I say, I'm just going to use this jack and its mate. And then I just go looking for the other black jack. Right? It's a very easy way to locate a pair. And then as I turn this deck face down again, I want to catch a break underneath this top card, the double backer. And you can do that a couple of ways, right? You could push it off, drag it back, and then catch the break that way. You could do a pinky count where you just drag your pinky down the side of the deck and make it pop. Or one of the most intriguing ways is you could set your thumb on this corner very lightly, but don't move your first finger out of the way, and then try to drag the card off diagonally, and that causes that back corner to bow, and you could just set it on top of your pinky. Anyway, however you want to do it, you just set those on top of the deck and on top of that double backer, and you say, watch, if I take these cards and I separate it from the rest of the deck, like this, you can tell it's making them nervous because they're shaking. Wah, wah. Anyway, and it makes them want to hide their faces like this. And I'm not kidding you, they are very good at hiding their faces, and you can tell because you won't see them. And that's when I peel off the double backer and I just show 
that the faces are gone. And this is sort of a fun proof, like right out the gate. If you're ballsy, you could do this. You can take this card and as you turn it over like this, you can learn to do a Stuart Gordon, which is this motion right here, and it turns it over as one as you bookend it on top of there. And that's actually sort of a fun exercise just to practice your double handling, right? But you show that the faces are gone. And then as I go to grab the deck again and say, if I put them on the deck, I just separate these cards again, right? I just, all I do is I drag that card out so that way I can show both sides. I say, if I put them back on the deck, you can see that now they don't mind it as much and they're happy to show their faces to you, right? And then you end clean because your double backer isn't involved anymore. You could put these on display as much as you want, as long as you put them back on the deck. Otherwise, that totally destroys the storyline. Anyway, that's something fun that you guys could do with the double backer provided by the cherries. I hope you enjoy that. I hope you enjoy the hell out of the cherries like I have for the past several years. And I'll see you soon.